We're back at it. Financial statement question number three. Calculating values by using the statement of earnings and statement of financial position equations, also called the financial reporting elements. Required, calculate the missing amounts for each of the independent cases below. Let's just look for one second again at the flow chart that we covered in our introduction to financial statements. We know that assets, which are owned by the corporation, are equal to liabilities owed to third parties plus equity, which is owed to the owners. Equity is made up of contributed capital and retained earnings. Contributed capital is equal to opening contributed capital plus issued shares minus repurchased shares. Those three amounts added together is equal to the ending contributed capital amount that shows up on the statement of financial position. Retained earnings is equal to opening retained earnings plus net earnings minus dividends. Add those three things together and it equals the retained earnings at the end of the period. That again shows up on the statement of financial position. Net earnings is calculated as revenue minus expenses. If we look back at the information we were given, we see we have total revenue, total expenses, and net earnings. We can plug this into the equation revenues minus expenses equal net earnings. In addition, we have total assets, total liabilities, and shareholders' equity. In this case, we can plug it into the basic accounting equation and solve for the unknown numbers. Let's do that for all three. For company A, we have revenues of 108,700. Subtract the expenses, 92,240. That's equal to net earnings of 16,460, the amount we were supposed to calculate. Now let's look at the basic accounting equation and plug in the known numbers. Solve for the unknown equity and it's equal to 72,900. Let's move on to company B. Revenue is unknown. Expenses are 82,740 and net earnings is 16,440. Solve for revenue, 99,180. Moving on to the basic accounting equation. Total assets are known. Liabilities are unknown. Equity is known. Solve for the unknown number and we get 30,570. Let's move on to number C. Revenue is known. Expenses are unknown. Net earnings? It's negative 8,870, which indicates it's not net earnings. It's actually a net loss. Solve for the unknown number and we get 79,830. You can see that the expenses are higher than the revenue, which is what caused the loss. Moving on to the basic accounting equation. Assets are unknown. Liabilities are known, as is equity. Solve for the unknown number and we get 101,250. Excellent. Let's move on to the next question. As a creditor, how would you use this information to decide whether or not to lend $50,000 repayable over five years to either company B or C? First, we would look at the statement of earnings of the two companies. Company B has net earnings of 16440 If we calculate this as a percentage of the total revenues by dividing 16440 by the amount of revenue, 99180 we find out that their profit margin is 16.6%, which is excellent. This means that for every dollar of revenue, the company is keeping 16.6 cents in their own pocket. Company C is a little bit different. They have a loss we can still calculate their profit margin, 8,870 negative, divided by their revenues of 70,960, which is equal to a negative profit margin of 12.5, which is very poor. Net earnings from the current period is used to predict future profitability and is a predictor of a business's ability to pay interest in the future on debt. We can clearly see that Company C, with their negative profit margin, may have difficulty paying interest as it comes due if these losses continue. What else can we assess? We can look at the Statement of Financial Position to assess the company's ability to pay debt as it comes due, referred to as solvency. Let's start with Company B. If we compare Company B's equity to their total assets, we can see that the company is mainly financed through equity. 94,310 divided by 124,880 is equal to 75.5%. That means that their assets are mainly financed through equity. Can we also calculate how much is financed through debt? Absolutely. Since assets is equal to the total of liabilities plus equity, this number is equal to the total of liabilities plus equity. Therefore, the total of liabilities and equity is equal to 100%. 
If I take 100% and I deduct the amount that is financed through equity, I will get the amount that is financed through debt, which is 24.4%. Remember, this can also be calculated as liabilities of 30,507 divided by their total assets of 124,880. Why is this ratio important? You can check out my video on the debt to equity ratio in order to learn more. What about company C? Let's do the same calculations. Equity financing first. The company is only financed 29.3% through equity. That means that their assets are mainly being financed through debt. We can calculate the percentage in two ways. 100% minus the 29.3, which is equal to 70.7. .7. We can also calculate it ourselves by taking the liabilities and dividing it by the total assets. Company C has far more debt financing. Because of that, we know they already have a lot of debt that they are servicing by paying interest. We know that Company C will be riskier to lend money to than Company B. Company B appears to have a better ability to repay the loan over the long term as well as service the loan by paying interest. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.